Okay, next up is learning about how to multiply complex numbers. So you already know how to kind of add them together. You just deal with the real part and the imaginary part separately. Um, so we're going to try and learn some of the other operations. So given that i is equal to the square root of minus 1, it follows that if you find i squared, well, i squared is just going to be equal to negative 1, okay? So we've got a couple of questions here, and it wants us to express each of the following in the form a plus bi, where a and b are integers. So question one, we've got some double brackets. We have 2 plus 3i and 3 minus 2i. Now, loads of people have different methods for how they expand brackets, but I'm going to start off by multiplying each bit by 2. So I'm going to do the 2 times the 3 and the 2 times the minus 2i. So 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times minus 2i is minus 4i. And then I'm going to do the 3i multiplication. So it's plus 3i multiplied by 3, and then plus 3i multiplied by minus 2i. So the 3i times 3 is 9i. And then we've got plus 3i times minus 2i. So the plus 3 and the minus 2 is going to give us minus 6. And the i times i is going to give us i squared. So let's do a little bit of simplifying on the next line that we've got here. So it's 6 minus 4i plus 9i. And then you've got minus 6 multiplied by i squared. Well, i squared is minus 1. So it's going to be minus 6 multiplied by minus 1, which actually makes it become positive 6. So just what you might like to think of saying here is that this is minus 6 multiplied by minus 1, so it becomes a positive 6. And then when we simplify this, we're going to deal with the real parts. So we've got the 6 and the 6 here, which is 12. And then I've got minus 4i plus 9i, which hopefully you can tell is plus 5i. Now, you do need to know how to do these without a calculator, but I just want to show you that you can actually do this stuff on a calculator as well. So if you go on the complex, on the graphics calculator that we have here, if I just go back to the main menu, you can just type in by doing the same thing. So it was 2, I think it was 2 plus 3i. i is down at the 0, so you press shift and the i. And then I think it was 3 minus 2i. I hope I've done that right. If I haven't, it's just a good demonstration of how it works. And then we've got the 12 plus 5i, which is the same answer that we had of 12 plus 5i. OK, and you could do the same thing on the class with calculator, which maybe I'll demo for the second question. So question two says 5 minus 3i squared. Well, that might help if you wanted to write the double brackets out in full, but this is further maths. You might want to start avoiding doing that kind of thing. I'm not going to do the arrows for this one. So 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 times minus 3i is minus 15i. I've then got minus 3i times 5 is minus 15i. And then I've got here minus 3i times minus 3i. Well, the minus 3 times minus 3 is going to be a positive 9, and I'm going to have the i squared. So we get 25 minus 15i minus 15i. 9i squared is going to be minus 9. The i squared is minus 1. So the real parts, 25 minus 9 is 16. Minus 15i minus 15i is 30i. Now, I think you're going to want to see if you can do this bit to go straight into minus 9. Minus 3i times minus 3i. What my brain does is it says minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. Uh, but I've got an I squared there, so I'm going to have to negate that answer. I'm taking it really slowly here. I think by the end of the exercise you're doing, I want you to try and do that in your head, because uh, I wouldn't want anybody uh, to be spending a lot of time on that. So I'm just going to quickly show you this on the class quiz. So it's 5 minus 3i on the calculator. So you just go, make sure you're in complex mode, go back to the normal calculations, and we're just going to do brackets 5 minus 3i, which is the eng bit that we have here. Uh, you need to be in complex mode for this to work. So actually, I need to go menu, number two, complex, and then you do 5 minus 3i, close the brackets, squared, and we get 16 minus 30i. So you do need to make sure you're in complex mode, which is number two first, OK? Let's do some other examples now, things that get a bit more interesting. So we've got a function here, and the function is z squared plus 6x plus 13 show by substitution that z equals minus 3 plus 2i is a solution of f of z equals 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing for z, we're going to substitute it in here, and hopefully that we're going to get the answer 0. Okay.
So we are going to substitute that straight in. We're going to do minus 3 plus 2i squared plus 6 lots of minus 3 plus 2i plus 13. And we're going to hope that this gives us 0. Now, obviously, you could type this in the calculator. But at the moment, we're learning how to do it without. In case you get some questions that have some algebraic parts in, you'd get really stuck if you just relied on the calculator because you can't type the algebraic stuff into the calculator. So we're going to do it manually. OK, you should be able to expand double brackets in your head. OK, you shouldn't have to write them out. Um, so we're going to have minus 3 times minus 3 is going to be 9. We're then going to get a minus 6i, but we're going to get that twice. So it's going to be a minus 12i. And then we're going to have 2i times 2i. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, but the i squared is going to make it minus 4. Now we're going to expand this second bit that we've got here. So we get minus 18 plus 12i plus 13. So we can see that the 12i's are going to cancel. So that's just going to be straightforward a 0. And then we have here 9 minus 4 is 5, plus 13 is 18, and subtract that 18, and we get the answer 0. Hence, z equals minus 3 plus 2i is a solution of f of z equals 0. If you want to, you can practice typing this into your calculator. You'll see how I did this expanding double brackets in my head. I'd like you to try and work towards that. OK, so let's see what we could do here again. I want you to try and do this without a calculator. We want to try and work out the value of i cubed, i to the power of 4, i to the power of 101, and then 3i to the power of 5. So let's start off, um, and this is a really important one for some more general knowledge here. So this isn't just a specific example. This is kind of to teach you a bit about how imaginary numbers work. Let's start off with i. Obviously, i is just going to be equal to i. And we know that i squared is minus 1. So i cubed is actually i squared multiplied by i, which is just minus i. And then i to the power of 4 is going to be i cubed multiplied by i. So that is i cubed, which is minus i, multiplied by i. So it's minus i squared. Well, minus i squared is minus minus 1, which is 1. So what I've written here looks pretty complicated. OK, I'm going to try and simplify this. I'm just going to write down the pattern that we've spotted so far. So i to the power of 1 was just i. i squared was minus 1. i cubed was minus i. And i to the power of 4 was 1. OK, let's see if we can continue this pattern. Let's go back over here. Let's do i to the power of 5. Well, i to the power of 5 is i to the power of 4 multiplied by i. Well, i to the power of 4 is just 1. And 1 multiplied by i is just i. So i to the power of 5 is i. Well, let's think what i to the power of 6 is going to be. i to the power of 6 is i to the power of 5 multiplied by i, which is just i to the power of 5, which is i multiplied by i, which is just i squared, which is minus 1. So hopefully you can spot what's happening here. We have this pattern of going i minus 1, minus i 1, i minus 1. There's a pattern of it flipping between i and a number, 1. And there's also a pattern of it going positive, um, so positive i, then negative 1, negative i, positive 1, positive i, negative 1. And it goes around in a loop. You can see we go i minus 1, minus i, 1, i minus 1, uh, minus i, 1. It's going to keep going round and round and round because of the way that this pattern works. So we want to try and figure out how might we predict what will happen when it's i to the power of 101. Well, something that we should notice here is 101 is one more than a multiple of four. Because uh, 25 times four is 100, so it's one more than a multiple of four. So the ones that are one more than a multiple of four are this one, or this one, 
So I think 101 is just, sorry, e, i to the power of 101 is just going to be equal to i. Okay, so the answer is i to the 101 is equal to i because it is one more than a multiple of four. If it was one less than a multiple of four, then it would have been minus i because of the way it cycles in this pattern in blocks of four. Kind of if I draw a line in there, makes it even more clear that we have this pattern of four things. Okay, let's now do the last part. Let's determine what is 3i to the power of 5. Well, we know how our brackets work. This is going to be 3 to the power of 5 multiplied by i to the power of 5. So i to the power of 5, well, we already have it here. It's just i. But we know that i to the power of 4 is 1. And so i to the power of 5 will just be i. Let's figure out what 3 to the power of 5 is because my brain's a bit lazy today. So it's 243. So you get 243i. Obviously, you can check this on your calculator, but the patterns are all there. By the way, when I worked out what i to the power of 4 is, I worked out i cubed multiplied by i. I'm wondering if there's a different way you could have thought about that. You could have done i squared squared, and minus 1 squared is 1. So there's lots and lots of different ways you could go about these. i to the power of 6, you could have done uh, i cubed squared which also would have given you minus one. So make sure you're playing around with all of your knowledge of indices so far and not just the way that I've shown it to you. There are lots and lots of different ways you could think about this. So go and have a look at exercise 1c. It's all about multiplying with complex numbers um, and hopefully my examples that I've given you there should be really helpful for you.